In this video, you're going to get a basic social studies lesson on the Constitution of the United States of America. If you're new here to my channel, then welcome. My name's Parker. I'm the founder of Test Prep Champions, and you can hit subscribe down below for more videos like this in the future. Thank you for joining me. So, my purpose for making this video is to provide you with an introduction and an overview to the Constitution of the United States of America. And if you read the document for yourself, you'll see that there's a lot of depth to it. And so, like I said, this is only an introduction and an overview. So I want to start off by talking about where and when the Constitution was written and also who are some of the main people that you should know about who were involved in the drafting and signing of this Constitution. So the Constitution was written during the Philadelphia Convention in, you guessed it, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So the Constitution was written and signed in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the Assembly Room of the Pennsylvania State House, which is now known as Independence Hall. And right now I happen to work in Center City, Philadelphia, so I drive by Independence Hall quite often and it's very beautiful. And the Constitution was written during what was then called the Philadelphia Convention, and it's now called the Constitutional Convention, which convened from May 25th to September 17th, 1787. Now, that's just a fancy way of saying, basically, that the Constitution was written and then signed from May 25th to September 17th, 1787, and it was signed on September 17th, 1787. So who are some of the major players involved in the United States Constitution? Well, there are many, many people that we could discuss in this video. So, like I said, we're not going to go super in-depth here, but some of the most famous people are, number one, James Madison. So, James Madison is often called the father of the Constitution. And the reason is because he played a huge role in writing the U.S. Constitution. And Madison went on to become the fourth president of the United States, and he served between 1807 to 1817 before he died of congestive heart failure in 1836. So again, James Madison is often considered the father of the Constitution for having a huge role in writing the Constitution. Now, another major figure is Alexander Hamilton, and we can think of him as the father of the U.S. financial system. And the reason is because after the Constitution, he went on to become the first secretary of the U.S. Treasury under President George Washington. And he created many of President Washington's economic policies before he was shot in 1804. And George Washington, who was the first president of the United States, is famous for being the first president of the United States and also for his military accolades because he was a great military general. And George Washington also played a role in the drafting and signing of the United States Constitution. So the last major figure who had a role in the Constitution that we're going to discuss in this video is Benjamin Franklin. And Benjamin Franklin is famous for many things, one of which being he was a founding father of the United States. And in throughout the world, Benjamin Franklin is famous also, especially in Philadelphia. In Philadelphia, there's the Benjamin Franklin Bridge, which is obviously named after Benjamin Franklin, which connects Philadelphia to Camden, New Jersey. And he founded the University of Pennsylvania, which I was fortunate enough to have attended from for about a year and a half. And he just did many things. He's also famous for for becoming an advocate for abolishing slavery almost 100 years before the U.S. Civil War was fought. And he was a slave owner at one point in his life, but he did free his slaves. He wrote many essays and did a lot of other things to advocate for abolishing slavery. And this was well ahead of time, almost 100 years before the U.S. Civil War was even fought. So he's famous for many things, and one of which is his role in the U.S. Constitution. So... Those are some of the major actors, and like I said, we could go on and on and on, and I could film for a couple hours talking just about the other people who were involved, but we're not going to do that, because right now I want to give you some of the main highlights, and if we could just distill everything that the Constitution contains and everything that it represents down to two points, it would probably be an impossible task here, but to try to help us put simplify this, I want to give two main highlights here that I think really, really 
embody what the Constitution is. So it's a document that gives power to the people. And the Constitution, it creates a government that puts power in the hands of the American people. And hopefully as we go through the different articles in the Constitution in just a minute or two, you're going to see clearly how the Constitution creates this government that puts the power in the hands of the people. So the other thing that the Constitution does is it lays out the goals and the vision that the Founding Fathers had for the nation. So like I said, Two of the main highlights of what the U.S. Constitution is all about is that it gives power to the people and it states the goals of the nation as the Founding Fathers envisioned it. And so the Constitution starts off with the preamble, and the preamble is basically an introduction. So it's an introductory statement, and in it we see the purpose and some of the guiding principles that the Founding Fathers had in mind here. So the preamble goes like this. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, Establish justice, ensure domestic tranquility, provide for the common defense, promote the general welfare, and secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, do ordain and establish this Constitution of the United States of America. So, if you really want to memorize the preamble without doing much work, the best way to do that is to go listen to the Schoolhouse Rock song where they recite the preamble, which I'll listen to down below. And I know almost every word of the preamble, word for word, by memory, because I've heard that song so many times. When I was in elementary school, I had to recite the preamble, and my teacher played the Schoolhouse Rock song every day for, you know, several weeks. I heard it, and so it got stuck in my head. I did kind of get tired of hearing the song after a while, but it is a catchy song, and it will help you memorize the preamble if you want to memorize it. So after the preamble are the original seven articles of the Constitution. Now I'm going to go down through the main important points of each article here, but as I've said at the beginning of the video, if you go read the Constitution for yourself, you'll see that there's a lot of depth to each of these articles that I'm not going to discuss in this video. So let's get into the most important points here. So Article 1 established the legislative branch, and the legislative branch is in charge of making the laws. And the legislative branch consists of the Congress, which is the House of Representatives and the Senate. And the representatives and the senators are elected by the people through voting. And here's a quote about Article 1 from the Constitution. It says, All legislative powers herein granted shall be vested in a Congress of the United States, which shall consist of the Senate and House of Representatives. So Article 2 establishes the executive branch, and the executive branch is the President of the United States. And the executive branch is responsible for enforcing the laws of the land, among other functions, but that's the most important one. And it's not just the President, it's also the Vice President, and also different advisors, and different people, but the main takeaway message about Article 2 is that it is the President of the United States. So, as an analogy here, if you think about a company, we would say, well, the company executive runs the company. Well, if you think of the United States kind of like a company, we would say, well, the executive of the company is the president of the United States. And just like the legislative branch, the president is elected by the people through voting. So, from Article 2, we see a quote that reads, the executive power shall be vested in a president of the United States of America. So moving on to Article 3 here. Article 3 establishes the judicial branch, which consists of the Supreme Court. And unlike the first two articles, which we see that the senators and the representatives and the president, we see that these people are elected by the people through voting. The Supreme Court justices are appointed by the president and confirmed by the Senate. So here we see a quote that reads, The judicial power of the United States shall be vested in one Supreme Court and in such inferior courts as the Congress may from time to time ordain and establish. So the next article here states the relationship between the states and the federal government. And in the United States, we now have 50 states here, and that's what Article 4 describes and defines. And so here's a quote about that. Full faith and credit shall be given in each state to the public acts, records, and judicial proceedings of every other state. And we're going to be talking a little bit more about the difference between state and federal laws in just a minute. So the next article is the amendment. So Article 5 is the amendments. And an amendment is a change. So the word amend, it means change, okay, roughly speaking. So the Article 5 it gave future generations the right to amend or change the Constitution when needed. Now, it's not such a simple process, though, because an amendment must be supported by two-thirds majorities in the House of Representatives and Senate, and it must be ratified by three-fourths of the states. 
And right now we have 27 amendments and the first 10 amendments are what we call the Bill of Rights. And the Bill of Rights consists of amendments that give Americans the freedom of speech, religion, freedom of the press, also the right to remain silent and the right to keep and bear arms. And I'll have a separate video where I talk about the Bill of Rights more in depth. So Article 6 is the Supreme Law, which really the Supreme Law is, it basically states that when state laws conflict with federal laws, then the federal laws are going to take priority. So the Constitution of the United States is the supreme law of the land, and we see that Article 6, it establishes this. And so basically, what's the difference between federal law and state law? Well, federal law... Federal laws are laws that apply in all 50 states and U.S. territories, whereas state laws only apply in particular states. So these are the two basic levels in the U.S. legal system. We've got the federal laws and the state laws, and as I've already said, when they conflict, the federal laws are to take priority. And so we see here, as an example, seatbelt laws. So one major difference is that is the seatbelt law, right? So in states like New York, Pennsylvania, Vermont, okay, if you drive without a seatbelt on, you are breaking state law. However, in New Hampshire, this is not a state law. So you can drive in New Hampshire without a seatbelt on and you might get pulled over and you might get punished for speeding or for something else, but the seatbelt law is not a state law in New Hampshire. It's not enforced in New Hampshire. So if you, however, drive across the border of New Hampshire and go into Vermont without your seatbelt on, you are breaking state law in Vermont. So the example here is the difference between state laws and federal laws. So seatbelt laws are not federal laws. So in New Hampshire, you don't need your seatbelt on, you won't get in trouble. Okay, and that's because that's a state law, or I should say lack thereof in New Hampshire. It's not enforced in New Hampshire. But if you drive across the border to a different state without your seatbelt on, you are technically breaking state law. So that's the difference between state law and federal law. So now let's move on to the next article, Article 7, which is ratification, which it's basically, it details everybody who signed the Constitution, and ratification, it basically just means signing and making valid, and that was that article. So here's a quote from that part of the Constitution. We see that ratification of the conventions of nine states shall be sufficient for the establishment of the Constitution between the states, so ratifying the same. And so, like I said, Note that the original Constitution didn't directly lay out the citizens' rights like in the Bill of Rights where we have those freedom of speech and the other freedoms here that came later in the Bill of Rights. And I will be talking about that in a separate video here. So you'll want to make sure that you're subscribed for that video when it does come out. And so really, I'm really glad that you made it through this presentation here. I hope that this was helpful for you as you further your study into the U.S. Constitution here. And I made this, this presentation here, I made it for free with slides Carnival, so I want to give a shout out to Slides Carnival. They've got really awesome templates, which I used one of them to make this video. So thanks again for watching. I'd really appreciate a thumbs up down below if you found this helpful, and good luck to you with your studies.